Uh, sure. This is a another um, uh, campaign air twelve promoting Donald Trump uh, for YouTube. Uh, it looks like the poll numbers. When I said the last time I looked at it, let's see. ABC had one eleven. Hillary eleven points ahead nationally, and I think several others, a couple others had four. Well, now it looks like she's six points ahead of him, according to what I just heard. So it looks like that what people think is that what Trump had to say, you know, the com comment he made to someone when he was um, playing in a soap opera, acting, or whatever he was doing, when he had no intention of ever becoming president at that point, or at least he wasn't very serious about it, and a comment that he made that he didn't know was being recorded, I don't know if he knew it was recorded or not, or didn't figure that anybody gave a hoot in hell about it other than the person he was talking to, is more important to the public because they've just dropped, you know, they just dropped him, what, 10 points, you know, or on some polls. Uh, all, you know, like I say, and I, I just did a report just recently where I think it's, it's the corporate media, it's the 1% basically that is doing this, trying to knock him off the same way they did Ross Perot, the same way they did Sanders, and the same way they've kept Jill Stein out of the media. All of these things. And apparently the public thinks that this is more important than what Jill Stein just brought out which is that if Hillary Clinton is elected, there will most probably be a nuclear war with Russia, and it will most probably will destroy the whole world. It will destroy Russia, it will destroy the United States, and anybody who thinks they're going to Australia to get away from it, they're probably not, because you have a nuclear winter afterwards, if there is one. Uh, of course, Someone needs to tell the Trump campaign. At least tell them, you know, here's the thing. There may be no nuclear war. I mean, someone will probably tell her, and you know, that a no-fly zone in Syria is not a good thing, and she'll probably drop it. I hope, but here's, here's the thing. If Jill Stein is afraid of a nuclear war, and Mikhail Gorbachev, both, he's afraid of one too, and apparently these people are very credible. They, they're very believable. A lot more believable than Hillary Clinton, and it's probably, you know, it's probably a serious matter. Uh, also, if the Russians are hacking our computers, and I don't, some thought that the that they made up that story so they could uh, make an impenetrable computer so that they could go on and do their dirty stuff, their covert operations that they don't want anyone to know about and keep them quiet. And that would saying the Russians are hacking our computer is a way of getting that passed. Um, but if the Russians really are, it's probably because they're afraid of nuclear war. They don't want Hillary in there. But um, the probability of a nuclear war is a lot higher than anyone thinks it is. And we say, oh, that'll never happen. But what about Kennedy in Cuba? Kennedy, um, with the Cuban Missile Crisis, we came very close to a nuclear war that time. Um, essentially, it has to do with... You know, people, uh, Kennedy was a fairly lousy president. Like I said, he, he was second rate. He had, first of all, he was involved in the Caribbean Basin Initiative. That was a failure. Uh, he started the Vietnam War. That was a failure. And he um, he tried to get Castro, plot to kill Castro and um, have Castro assassinated. That failed and he ended up getting himself shot, uh, which was, you know, the idea is to shoot the other one and not get yourself shot. The other thing is, apparently he was a bad chess player because what he tried to do, he had to put nuclear missiles in Turkey, which was a fairly stupid move when you had Cuba wide open. And that's like when you're playing chess and you try to checkmate someone else's, you're in the process of trying to checkmate someone else's king and you leave yours wide open. It's pretty much the same thing. So you wonder how, what a good chess player he was. Apparently not very good. I mean... How could he, you know, how could he handle a move like the one in Stanley Kubrick's 2001: A Space Odyssey, where they have, you know, where they take a knight and put the uh, king in check, and then uh, one piece takes that, and then another one takes that piece, and then another one takes that piece, and then a third piece takes the other one and puts and check makes the king. You know, I like I, and how, you know, you wonder how good of a chess player is Hillary. 
I mean, if Kennedy was as lousy as he was, and you know Hillary's not even as smart as Kennedy, and here she, what she's trying to do is start a no-fly zone in Syria so that we shoot down any Russian plane that violates our no-fly zone when uh, Russia has nuclear weapons, uh, that's an idiocy. It's just, she's right down there with intelligence of the damnable W and LBJ. Uh, and she also has a policy of non-diplomacy and no dialogue. And that's been a very, you know, retarded policy we've had for quite a while. That basically is the hard right, narrow-minded, ignorant, arrogant Republican policy. It's not the moderate right. It's the hard right. And we've had this policy forever. And what has that done? I mean, the reason we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, basically, if we'd had a dialogue going on with Castro and been doing some trade, he never would have allowed missiles in Cuba. Less apt to. So diplomacy works. Well, what Jill Stein said about Donald Trump is that he wants a dialogue with Putin, which is going to prevent prevent us from having nuclear war and a lot less apt to. And that's what Jill Stein said. And that's why she thought Trump was a better candidate of the two. Now, how is this issue less important than this locker room banner thing, which the 1% is trying to use to keep their power and their stronghold, uh, the corporate America and their stronghold over the government, and to keep, protect us, keep us from our one man, one vote? When that's all it is, it's just a big smear. You know, how do they figure that that's more important than, than Hillary's starting a nuclear war? with this no-fly zone. And Stephen Hawking pointed out, you think it's not possible to have a nuclear war. What Stephen Hawking said was that every day our chance of having a nuclear war becomes greater until it reaches 100% probability, which means that the only thing that would ever stop us from having a nuclear war would be if something else destroyed, that destroyed the Earth would be if something else destroyed it first, which would be, like I say, a rogue black hole would be a volcano or a, you know a, a solar flare with a whole lot of radiation or something like that um, some natural thing that destroyed it but uh, the fact that we have nuclear weapons and the fact that we have enough to destroy the earth 50 times is proof positive that eventually the earth will be destroyed and it will almost happen so it's going to happen eventually in just a matter of time and you get someone like Kennedy in they didn't know what he was doing. Like I say, he's a lousy chess player. You wonder how people like that get elected. They do. You know, and he almost destroyed the earth with the Cuban Missile Crisis. It just takes one more crisis like that. And you have an idiot like Hillary that gets in there and thinks you can create a no-fly zone and uh, shoot down a Russian plane and, end, uh, and not end up destroying the earth. And that's just stupid. And that's why Gorbachev's worried about it. And if the Russians are hacking our computers, they're probably scared to death. They're going to get... You get nuked, it's going to destroy both countries, Russia and the United States. The reason you don't want a president, a candidate like that, is because the, if you have a candidate that's hand on the nuke button, the way Hillary's is, you don't want one that's dishonest. And you, this is, and you know she's dishonest. She lied about Walmart, what she did on the board of Walmart. She lied about what she did in Haiti. She created a fraud there, and she lied about the credit card, uh, what she did, how she voted with the credit card lobby. She lied about all three of those things. You don't want someone with no integrity that's dishonest, not trustworthy, when you're dealing with a nuke button. And they've had a policy in the Air Force for a long time. They had. Uh, a girl that wanted to fly B-52s, they wouldn't let her because she had lied about uh, dating somebody. There was a period of time they couldn't date anyone or something like that. She lied about that. She was in North Dakota. She said it was really cold up there. She needed a boyfriend. This, this was on 60 Minutes. And they said um, that it was 20 below zero. Well, actually, when I was in North Dakota, it was 40 below, she said. Actually, the wind chills 40 below most of the time in the winter, but actually, the temperature is 20 below, which... Uh, may not have any importance, but the point I'm trying to make, uh, 60 minute, the Air Force argue that you have to have, you have to be, have someone that's trustworthy because they're dealing with you when you're fighting a war. You have to be able to trust them. And uh, why would you put someone in that's that dishonest and says one thing and does another? And she says, 
and even in the wiki leaks it came out that she you're, you're supposed to lie about what you're doing you know you're screwing the public over you're in bed with the one percent you're taking campaign money you're helping them to the detriment of everyone else and then you lie about it create committing a fraud you don't know whether you can trust her with the you know with going in there creating a no-fly zone and starting a nuclear war with the with Russia, uh, she could do. She'd say one thing and do another. You can't trust her, and so for all those reasons, she shouldn't be elected. The other thing, um, we even had the same problem with General Petraeus. I don't remember what happened with him. I can't remember that exactly, but he got in trouble for the same thing. And Petraeus is far more um, credible than Hillary. He's far more honest. But for those reasons, she shouldn't be elected, and I agree with Jill Stein, I trust Jill Stein, and I trust Mikhail Gorbachev, and when they say we're very close to a nuclear war, and Hillary is, doesn't know what she's doing, I think they're right. Um, the other thing I want to point out, she also said, and I think it's very, which is worrying me, uh, she, she said she wanted to pull the plug on uh, the internet. You know, because of all the negative stuff come out about her, and uh, and that probably means YouTube. I don't know what she tried to do. It. She tried to shut up Mika Brzezinski, and you know, what Debbie Wasserman Schultz tried to get her fired. It, I wouldn't put a past her to try to shut up YouTube. I don't think she'd be capable of doing it, though. I think Mika Brzezinski still, I don't think they fired her. But the main thing is that Hillary acts in a covert way. I mean, she's covert. She's dishonest. She's going to do what she's going to do, and say one thing and do another. And uh, you don't want someone like that with their finger on the nuke button. I, I think the probability of a nuclear war occurring between Russia and the United States with Hillary in there is very, very high. And you can't, and, and when it happened with, almost happened with the Kennedy, and she's not as smart as Kennedy. Oh, the other thing I'm going to say about diplomacy. Diplomacy works. Uh, like I'm saying, if, if we started a dialogue with Castro, we probably wouldn't, they wouldn't have allowed nuclear weapons in Cuba. And this, she's got this hard right, narrow-minded, ignorant, Republican attitude that's been going forever where you don't start a dialogue. And so you don't have, and you don't accomplish anything without a dialogue. I mean, look at, look at H.W. If you don't believe that, look at H.W. I mean, you know, Saddam moved into Kuwait. Well, you notice he didn't do that when Reagan was in. You know, you think, well, just a coincidence. Well, as it turns out, the Bush's own three oil companies, and the reason Saddam moved into Kuwait, it had a business deal. The two didn't like each other. That's bad diplomacy. Well, it turns out, and you find out that the reason he moved in is because he didn't like H.W. So H.W. was a terrible diplomat. Well, look at the big war we had, just the result of bad diplomacy and the fact that he didn't start a dialogue with Saddam. And I found, you listened to Saddam talk, and he said he liked Ronald Reagan. You know, I thought, well, that was the same thing. I hated H.W., and I liked Reagan. I mean, so, and so Saddam may have been fairly level-headed in one, a lot of those people that are crazy and, you know, the way he was and everything, a lot of times they're level-headed on in certain ways. It's like an eight-track tape. Part of their mind's normal, you know, but, but if you can get to them in the part of the normal part of their mind, sometimes you can get, you can, you can stop wars. And, and, and W, she, and Hillary's just as big an idiot as W. And she's supported the Iraq war. She's dogmatic, ignorant, arrogant. She yells that narrow-minded, you know, establish a dialogue. She's going to start World War III. And, you know, people are more worried about the locker room banner thing that Trump's talking about. And all because of the corporate media, the 1%. And how they frauded everybody and brainwashed everybody, and everybody's falling for it hook, line, and sinker. Even Bill Maher fell for it, for the crooked media and the 1%. And that's how they knocked off Perot, that's how they knocked off Sanders, and that's how they're going to knock off Trump. Um, and I guess that's all I can think of right now. Thanks for watching.